Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and with this video, I'll be discussing my thoughts on episode 5 of the anime series Death Parade. And this was just an amazing, amazing episode. You know, I, I'm i watching it, and I feel like I know while I'm watching it that I'm seeing just a modern art masterpiece unfolding in front of me. Uh, you know, with all the different sort of twists and turns in this episode, I mean, things are really off to a strange start. We're inside a dream going on in the uh, assistant character Ona's mind to do with this little boy who uh, is sort of starstruck for this girl who can't hear. We find out uh, Jimmy and uh, Shavat are the names of the characters within this dream. And it's interesting because I immediately recognized those particular, you know, characters and the way that whole sequence was drawn, if you will, and animated. It definitely called back to mind that we'd seen this before in the series, a book that Nona actually is seen reading early on. And uh, also in the OP, we see there are two little sort of, you know, Raggedy Ann and Andy version uh, dolls of these two characters from this dream, from this book, whatever it is. And uh, I don't know if this is a real world, you know, sort of uh, folktale story or something like that, or something specifically created for the show. Uh, I will probably be doing some digging to find out and see what relevance it may carry. Um, but it's interesting because, of course, you know, only wakes up and she is kind of looking through her closet she sees an outfit she's not sure if it's been there before or all this time and uh, I had a sense from that point on that we were going to delve a little deeper into her character and we definitely do but I like how it's through the eyes of all these people surrounding her in Quindecum uh, not only Deckham and Nona of course but we are debuted uh, we see a little more of Clavis the uh, you know guy who runs the elevators we are introduced to Ginty, and this is the first of the twists and turns in this episode that I am referencing. Of course, if you've seen it, you know full well. Uh, you basically have what seems to be everything is, you know, status quo. We have two new souls coming down for their arbitration, and Deckham's eyes go sort of buck wild for a moment there when he's supposed to be getting the memories. Uh, this is after Ona, of course, has come into Quindecum after getting her clothes on and everything, and um, she's very much sort of offset by the dream she's having. She's not sure what it amounts to, and uh, as we find out through the course of the episode, you know, I mean, basically after these two souls come in and uh, we see that something is amiss with them, Deckham already, uh, because of the way his eyes reacted, he said something was off about them. Turns out one of the two, you know, he didn't get the memories of them, the child. There was an adult guy with a beard who was really sort of angsty and angry and had seemingly fleeting memories of having dealt with this before, which was kind of trippy in and of itself. But then what it amounts to, uh, you know, basically the fact that this child is actually Ginty in disguise... And it's all revolving around Ona. You know, Ona is basically knocked out by this kid just before we're revealed to Ginty, a fellow arbiter who uh, I guess is very impetuous and somewhat of a problem. You know, Nona doesn't really want him being the one to run Quindecum uh, or at least take the equivalent spot to Deckham himself because of his attitude and because of his sort of, uh, I guess, quarrelsome nature. And it's very interesting, you know, Deckham's own sort of not knowing how to deal with the situation because when she first arrived in Quindecum, she still had her memories. She still remembered how she died. And so it was sort of his call to wipe her memory. And that's what, you know, that whole dreaming of this storybook fantasy, if you will, is about. It's kind of taking up uh, and filling her mind with that void of her memories that they've taken out. Um, you know, basically, Nona is the one who found her, and I guess she is the one who was responsible for taking out the memories and imploding all of this uh, fantasy storybook stuff. And it's just intriguing that because the Arbiters are at odds. You know, uh, Ginty is there to really get up in, you know, Deckham's face about why aren't you making a decision about this girl? Why, why is it so tough? Uh, you know, Nona was doing this to test him. This whole, you know, letting Ginty go in and, and you know, mess around with, uh, you know, the bearded guy being a soul and the child being a soul and to see if Dakum is really focused on the job. And we see that he's not. Um, he is obsessed and obsessively thinking about 
you know, Ona and how to deal with that and, and her sort of reactions to things. So it's not so much as I speculated in the beginning that, you know, she's the human voice that is supposed to help Deckham decide and, and better deliberate the arbitrations of souls. In fact, it's more along the lines of Deckham has to keep his eye on her because he needs to decide what her fate will be. Does she go up? Does she go down? And I find this wholly intriguing as it sort of coincides, you know, through uh, the first half of the episode, we see that Nona is playing billiards with these just, it, it's absolutely magnificently animated, you know, it's a pool table of like a galaxy and all the planets of our solar system are the billiard balls and it's uh, her versus Oculus, the old guy uh, who, you know, says he's the closest thing in Quindecum or whatever this environment is to be known as, uh, if we're just calling the bar Quindecum, you know, he says he's the closest thing to being a god in this environment. Just absolutely mind-blowing that. Um, but their discussion has to do with, you know, how long has Deckham been employed? Five years? How long uh, has Nona been around? Eighty-some-odd years? It's intriguing because it seems like everyone is under the microscope, even though the focus is supposed to be on Ona herself. And, uh, you know, you have people questioning Dakum, you why are you letting it get to this point, letting Ginty get up in your face? Why are you challenging him back? You know, the whole emphasis is that for whatever reason, Dakum is not thinking along the lines of what he's supposed to be thinking. He's not carrying himself and conducting himself along his job requirements because he is plagued. He is plagued by Ona's existence. He's plagued by his indecisiveness about her. And of course, you know, seeing Ona through all these other characters' eyes, it's very intriguing because she doesn't know why she's there. She's just going with the flow. She's had her memories taken out of her death and presumably her life. Uh, Nona asks Deckham, has she started remembering anything yet? And he says no. So they are waiting for an awareness and, and you know, sort of an awakening within her of her memories, very similarly to how they arbitrate these souls. But when she first arrived, Deckham says she would not be persuaded to play games. She would not be persuaded to go through this whole rigmarole. So what is it all going to amount to? Toward the end of the episode, we see Nona goes to uh, this other character with an almost skull face mask kind of thing. Um, I guess she is meant to embody the informant bureau of Quinn Deckham, who uh, passes along, you know, the memories of the newly deceased. And she says there are over 7 million or whatever it is, 7,000 a day or, you know, every hour people, souls dying on earth and all that kind of stuff. They can't die fast enough anymore. Uh, to quote the time machine, her name is Castra. And uh, there's some talk about, you know, go to Oculus, ask him, uh, for advice, ask him for time off, and all these kinds of things. These are the sort of topics that they're circling in their discussions. And it's just mind-blowing. This episode was mind-blowing. Like I say, I get almost emotional at watching this episode uh, from beginning to end because of all of the revelations going on, all of the angst, all of the emotion in characters that, you know, short order, they shouldn't be showing. They shouldn't be experiencing necessarily and then sort of the tragedy that surrounds Ona herself, that, you know, she's in this predicament and she hasn't made head nor tail of it. Will she, by the end of the series, remains the question. Uh, will there ever be, you know, is Deckham's obsession with her going beyond just trying to decide her fate? Could he have feelings for her? Could this fantasy story Chavot, as we see once again, as a reminder for those who maybe didn't, you know, notice early on in the series that this was a book that Nona was reading, uh, you know, it's right there. Could that whole dream sequence embody emotions being felt between Deckham and Ona is a question I have. And so uh, no, you know, arbitration in the strictest sense in this episode and hints toward a potential arbitration to come for Ona as a character, as a human being. You know, she has not passed on. She is not uh, beyond this mortal coil in the sense as all these other characters are. And it's just deeply, deeply fascinating, intriguing beyond reproach. And uh, this has to be you know, the best series, the best anime series 
of this particular wave, uh, at least in my opinion. So I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below what you thought of episode 5 of Death Parade. If you've seen it, were you as wowed as I was by it? Were you confused by it? Uh, did this video at least help, you know, quell some of those reservations or uncertainties? You know, and uh, if you have speculations to put forth, feel free to do so in the comments below as well, uh, as well as posting your reaction to the episode. So, yeah, otherwise I hope this video finds you well and that you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you all later. Peace.